but it's a nice walk. It's a beautiful day, and people are looking at all these lovely people in this group and saying, "Who are they?" I'll tell you who they are in case you want to know. They're people of peace from all over the world. Here in New York City at the UN, because it is time for an abolition of nuclear weapons. Yes. We call upon you to see us. We are the people who kindly and persistently are calling on this nation to obey the law. Nuclear weapons are illegal. It is time for all people of goodwill to rise in their consciousness and in their actions and to call for this nation to get rid of its nuclear weapons. We know that we together will make it happen. And we call out to the rest of the world, join us. Even if you don't know, listen and learn and join us. We are not out here because we're crazy. We are out here because we want a world that is at peace. We want a world that works for all of us. We want a world that our young people will be glad to live in, and we want to be there with them. Okay, we're going to stop right here, yeah. and we're going to have our first speaker, which will be Tim Wallace, Right, well, we know we got to get rid of nuclear weapons. Yeah! But we also have to address the climate crisis yes. and all the other terrible things that are going on in the world that take money, that take resources, and we've got to turn those and take the, the resources and the billions and trillions, literally, of dollars that are being committed for nuclear weapons, and we've got to put that money and those resources, those, the, sidewalk, the, the human, uh, technical sidewalk. and infrastructure and all the things that are going into nuclear weapons, we need to put that into climate and into human needs. Yeah. Warheads Woo! to windmills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right on. To both the Russian and the uh, U.S. mission together. Please stay on the sidewalk. And we want to thank all the groups that participated. Yeah. Dear President Vladimir Putin, Ambassador Vasily Nevencia, Amb UN Ambassador of the Russian Federation, and President Joseph Biden, Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, UN Ambassador of the United States of America. To save all humanity, we unequivocally support the international law the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, DPMW. One singular nuclear weapon is capable only of murdering millions of innocent people. That is all it can do. It cannot bring peace or justice. But one meeting between leaders can save the world. You've done it before together. Such bravery, wisdom, and personal diplomacy is what we urgently ask of you. PNW provides a careful, orderly, verified process which would enable us all to fulfill our promise to begin nuclear disarmament. We have several U.S. representatives attending a side event of the second MSP. We also have two pieces of legislation in the current U.S. Congress urgently supporting the TPNW, H.R. 2775 and House Resolution 77. <coughs> We urge you for the security of the world to observe the second meeting of states parties and sign the TPNW. There is little hope of any future without this mutual effort. Thank you, respectfully. And many, many organizations signed on to that letter. All right, we're going to continue on down in this lovely sunlight. We're going a couple more blocks. As we gather here, we are... We're here by the Russian mission, and we have a message, uh, we have some words to share. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Aigeron Shitsenova, and I'm from Kazakhstan. I'm a third generation survivor of the Soviet nuclear testing. I'm the Soviet Union tested 456 nuclear bombs in my home, in my homeland, in Kazakhstan. Imagine 456 nuclear weapons. I'm standing here in New York on the blood, tears, and sweat of my people. Our bodies and our land have been scarred by the tragic nuclear legacy. I'm representing young people.
people of Kazakhstan calling for nuclear justice, my grandparents, my parents, and all the generation of Kazakh people have been guinea pigs of the nuclear experiment. Russia inherited a seat at the UN Security Council, but yet never acknowledged the humanitarian and ecological consequences of my nuclear legacy. There is no social justice without nuclear justice. There is no climate justice without nuclear justice. Young people, we all call for the world without nuclear weapons. Thank you so much. I'm standing with solidarity with all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for making this journey. God bless all the groups that are here with us. Um, and I want to thank the, our police force for guiding us all the way up here. Thank you very much uh, for taking care of us. And I want to thank the Russian mission for agreeing to come out and receive our letter. Uh, and Sergey, uh, thank you very much. I don't know your name, uh, your last name, I forget. Sergey Edmin has been kind enough to come out, receive our letter. Uh, we're just going to say a, a few words. Um, I'm a New Yorker for many years, and all my life, in the 70s anyway, I remember plane loads of Japanese hibakusha coming to my city, handing me little cranes and all of us. You came out here, you've been coming out here for decades, hibakusha asking us here at the UN to please listen to the people. Um, so, in the 1970s especially, and the 1980s, we had tremendous citizen exchanges with the Russians. Uh, we knew, those of us who knew, that we are people. And we had artists, we had scientists, we had doctors, uh, we had activists on both sides of this fence. We knew the word enemy was not really true for the citizens uh, of Russia and the citizens of America. We knew that these nuclear weapons, and back then we had politicians, Kennedy and Khrushchev, who understood, who understood what these weapons do. Today our policymakers have a real disconnect to the science of, of nuclear weapons. They know the humanitarian consequences they understood. Kennedy and Khrushchev understood this very well. They back-channeled and we got this first test ban treaty atmospheric pass. So I want to thank all the... and Gorbachev when he came years later to our White House thanked all the American people and the people around the world for standing up against nuclear weapons. And it was that moment between Khrushchev and Kennedy where we almost got there but also with Gorbachev and Reagan, we almost got there, but we know the industry kicked in, and uh, here we have Dr. Ira Helfand has been at this for many decades, going around the world, please, pleading with people to understand the science and the effects of these weapons and what they do. We are at an extraordinarily dangerous moment. And it is easy, I think, for us to be somewhat overwhelmed by the danger that we're facing right now. But we have to remember that we were at an equally dangerous moment in the 1980s. And President Gorbachev and President Reagan had the wisdom to understand that no issue that stood between the Soviet Union and the United States was important enough to risk a nuclear war. Our current leaders do not yet have that understanding, and it is our job to help them come to that realization. A nuclear war will be a disaster for everyone, and we need to make sure that our leaders understand what is involved. As Anthony pointed out, they don't get the science. They literally don't know what's going to happen if there's a nuclear war, and that's our job, to make sure that they do. I'm very grateful that you've come down, Sergei, to receive the letter, and I hope you will help to bring this message to the leadership of your country. Um, there have been a lot of really frightening nuclear threats emanating from the Kremlin over the last year and a half. and not to single out Russia, other countries have also been engaged in this kind of nuclear bullying for decades. It has to stop. If you don't get rid of these weapons, they're going to get used. And everything that we care about is going to be destroyed. And that does not need to happen. We can prevent that from happening. We stopped the Cold War arms race in the 80s. We can get rid of nuclear weapons today.
Thank you. We are also going to just hear a moment from Martha Hennessy, who's the granddaughter of Dorothy Day, who in 1945 in August, that the first bomb, Dorothy Day stood up, put in writing that we just vaporized many, many thousands of human beings. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you. I've had three trips to Russia. It's an amazing place. I think the great scandal is that the vast majority of nuclear weapons are in the hands of white Christians. And I think that the world is on its knees with a nuclear gun pointed at its head. And we need to stop this. And so let's keep marching, let's keep working, and let's keep praying that Joe Biden, a Catholic Democrat, can do the right thing. Thank you. I have to thank you, James, for two hours guiding this whole crew. Like, so beautiful. Hand to James. Peace action. So this is for our Russian and our United States missions and everybody. We shall shown by our leadership and both by American leadership, so I guess we can move towards the right direction. But the essential is that this movement should not be a one way. It should be both ways. And this, I think this is the path for us to reach the final decision. And uh, I should thank you for your activity. And uh, to conclude, I think that finally, as it goes in this song, we shall overcome. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Julie Melby? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The letter was translated into Russian by Michael Gorbachev, who's distantly related to Mikhail Gorbachev. So, thank you. And um, there's a lot about working together with Russia. Can I switch you?